Previous five, unrelated again. Uh, can you describe what a mandrake is and a little bit about the mandrake of the week and DJ Davidson? Yeah, um, the mandrake is a mystical creature. Um, it's somebody that personifies what Herm wants to build around here. Somebody that is uh, tough, um, diligent, does what they're supposed to do. They make plays. They're not soft. They're not afraid. They're aggressive. Um, and, and does everything right. And so, uh, you know, DJ, DJ, we couldn't block him on scout team last year. We couldn't, our offensive line, we had no shot. When he wants to play, and he's, he is an extremely talented player. Like, we knew this back when, I, uh, back when Billy was here, the first year when he was on the scout team, there would be times he would just wreck the whole play. And he was a freshman then, I think he would have been. Um, and we were like, where, where is this kid come from, man? And um, so it doesn't surprise me to see that he won the Mandrake Award. Hold Rubino Devils Digest, Rob. Yes. Uh, usually in life, things are not as great or as not as bad as right, they seem right. to. Uh, and I know that after week one, you said when you looked at the film, um, you felt better after watching the film than in the moment of the game. Right. Um, what was the uh, sentiment uh, watching the film after week yeah. two? Yeah, um, just disappointed. I was disappointed. Um, there was so, so many different things that happened. It was it was. It was crazy. I talked to you guys, you know, after the game. I, I, what I saw from the booth, you know, that I kind of confirmed watching the film. We physically got beat. It, it places not going to hide from that. Um, we had some poor uh, um, miscommunication that, uh, you know, our inexperience showed up at times on the miscommunication on zone plays. And uh, several times we let people go at the point of attack, which is that, you know, you can't, can't even get the play started. Uh, when you do that, and then we ha we had, and it was just crazy. We had we'd have a breakdown there, and then you know we would do this and do that. I thought we had a a good plan coming out at halftime, um, moving him around a little bit, uh, you know, taking shots deep, and you know then we would shoot it ourselves in the foot. But really, to me, that would have disappointed me in its own. You know those things. But really, the thing that bothered me the most that gives you sleepless nights is our inability to punch it in inside the 10 yard line like that that's just that can I don't care if you have five year olds out there on offense I don't care how young you are whatever I got to find a way we got to find a way to punch the dang football in inside the 10 yard line that's that's just if we do that just two times you know it's 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 a whole different attitude and everything this week you know as you watch the game and and uh so that that was really really disappointing something that uh very i'm looking forward to getting fixed um as the season goes i'm jeff metcalf uh, arizona jeff. republic it did take a while last year even with a, an older group of offensive linemen to really get the yeah. run game where you wanted to probably until washington and right. then beyond that yep the circumstances are different, but it's still reasonable to think that it's going to be, you know, it's going to take you, you know, a, a couple more games maybe to really get yeah. it where you want it to be. It's, you know, it's not a quick fix, guys. You know, um, it's just not. It's not going to be a quick fix. I know people don't want to hear that. Fans don't want to hear that. It, it, it just is what it is, and it's going to um, – you know, like I said, as a fan, like I'm a fan of baseball. You know, I don't want, I don't like to hear managers come up and say, "Hey, it's not a quick fix." I'm like, "Well, you need to get it fixed." But I, so I know what a fan thinks. I get it. I hey, I understand. I'd be angry too. I heard boos. I I would have. I booed myself. You know. Um, so it's, but it's not. It's not going to be a quick fix. We have to develop young players, and it's going to. You can't do that. Um, you, offensive linemen, honestly, in, in developed programs where you want it to be, most of the time you don't even see those guys play until they're red shirt juniors. Um, so, I mean, so, you know, those are the, the offensive linemen are the, 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 it takes longer for them to develop than any other position. You know, you can get away with playing young receivers, young running backs, stuff like that. You can even get away at times playing a young quarterback, but. Offensive linemen just takes time, and, and it's good. We're going to have to develop, develop those guys. We're going to have to protect them in, the, in what we do. And, um, you know, so it's, it's not going to be easy. Greg Moore, Arizona Republic. Good to see you, Coach. Ayuk is really showing some flashes. Yes. What can you do to sort of get him some more opportunities? You know, we could move him around like we did in the kill last year. We could start doing some things um, like that in that nature and just target him more. Um, you know, and Frank as well. Frank's a, he's got a special quality catching the deep ball. 
Um, I, you know, I just think Kyle Williams is a good player to get the ball to in space. Um, and, and, you know, th so those are the things, those are the great positives that we're working with now, you know, just trying to, okay, wh what can we do? Wh what are the things that we're struggling with? Let's try to hide the things that we're struggling with if you can, and then maximize the things that you have available to you, which is the talent of some of our wide receivers and our skill guys. Uh, so that's what we're doing right now and trying to come up with that in our game plan. That's a good point. Chris Carvinson, that was first. Rob, is, it, is there some comfort, even though it's a, a tougher physical challenge, knowing that Michigan State's going to line up where they're going to line up, they're going to two-gap you, like you, like the assignment-wise, it maybe should be a little bit easier to understand. Oh, the assignment-wise, yeah, you think, you think, you hope that, think and hope they do, you know, but yeah, they're too good to just, they're just a really good football program. They're going to line up how they line up. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit easier than like if we were playing our defense. When I say easier, for communication purposes, you know, like, you know, I told you before, they're going to, that five technique's going to say, hey, I'm a five technique and I'm going to whip your butt. Here I am. Let's go. And I would too if I was them, you know. So it's going to be that type of game. But uh, um, yeah, I think the, the communication should be a little bit easier, you would hope. It's a good point. Now the crowd noise and all that stuff will be this will be the first time our quarterback's been on the road and be interested to see uh, how he reacts to the crowd noise and uh, 75 80,000 people that are going to be there uh, just another question so uh, some of the things that seem to work like the I formation you had success with with Elijah as a lead blocker mm -hmm. uh, in, in the short red and then you had uh, some play actions seem to kind of work some of the bootleg things that just can you talk about maybe kind of being able to expand on some of the things that did work well for you yeah sure yeah and like, like I said you try to like look and go okay it, that, that's hard sled and like um, um, coach Herm was saying like are we schematically this is not the same offense that we had last year obviously it's not the same offensive line I watch our game from last year I look at our tackles um, and you know they were big guys that were were pretty confident and you know they they weren't panicking and they just sat back and punched guys and kind of held their own and we were able to to pass protect um, so what you got to do is you got to ask yourself schematically um, uh, yes we had success with that last year we thought we were going to be able to do this and then you look and go well maybe we can't do that so then you got to decide okay now what are we going to do and then you got to make those decisions quick and then you can't just keep jumping around all year. You're never going to be any good at anything. So, um, so yeah, you know, we're, we're right now, that's what we did last year. You know, got here at 6 o'clock in the morning and uh, was excited to get back in the life. This is a great challenge. I'm excited. You know, as the older I get, um, you find out that you don't shy away from problems, that problems actually bring, um, you know, perseverance. And it teaches you a lot of great things about yourself. That's what I'm trying to teach the kids. Um, is that don't shy away from the problem. Don't get a bad attitude because we have a problem right now. You ought to embrace this problem, all right? And it's, a, uh, it's gonna be a tremendous challenge for the coaches, for the players to overcome this, to get better. And that's what life is all about, man. You wanna do great things, overcome a challenge, all right? It's just not gonna be easy and you just wake up and great things happen to you. I mean, most of you guys in here that probably have gotten your job and done something, you've had to overcome things in your life. I slept on couches for six years, work for $5,000 a year for six straight years to just be able to coach football. Um, and so, you know, just, just teaching the kids that, I love this challenge. This is going to be awesome. We get to go up to Michigan State. Uh, nobody thinks we're any good on offense. And uh, they're the number one Russian defense in the country, and we can't run the football. It doesn't get any better than that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let's go. Any more questions? Uh, just Rob, just through two weeks with Jaden, just how would you assess where he is, where he started, where he is now? Yeah, I, I love his just attitude, his mentality. He never gets rattled. Um, you know, today we had a great talk after practice, walking off the practice field. Um, and I thought maybe he was a little down. And he was like, ah, oh, coach, it's a long season, man. We got to just get better. You know, and I was like, <laughs> hold on, who's coach who? You know, and so uh, just like his mindset is, is amazing in that way. He's very mature. He has a realistic outlook on what's going on. Like, and that's what I love about him. He, that's why he doesn't panic, because he has a, uh, yeah, just, just a great perception of, of what's going on. 
for, for so many things that, that went wrong, the touchdown that was called back, the drop passes, mm -hmm. the fumble at the goal line, he didn't really seem to visually from, I mean, way up with the knockers looking. It didn't look like that yeah. affected him. Was he, was he like that? I mean, at, at the whole game. We talk after every series, and so uh, uh, after we threw the touchdown pass to Ethan, I mean, sorry, I'm sorry, to Eno, uh, he gets on the phone, calls me up, and I go, what does he want? Hey, coach. And I go, yeah. He goes, man, that was a, that was a really good call. And I was like, oh, thanks. I mean, appreciate it. I mean, you know what I mean? Thanks. And then he goes, okay, just wanted to tell you that. <laughs> and he's up. I mean, he's just, he's got that mindset. He doesn't get rattled. The moment is not too big for him. He's just, a, he's just so much fun to coach. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. That's, that's a Chris question right there. Why didn't you just call that on the first play of the game? There you go. 